Ah, well, there, that's better. How about some review? Ask me any question from a reading relative to a project, even an old project, which by the way, you have a chance to turn in again. <laughs> Uh, any question about Python? Is the Python stuff we have going to be used for our last project? Python? You mean on your local machine? Yeah, the stuff that we just downloaded. Yes, you are going to get one more project. It, um, uh, of which I hope to do a lot of it today in class. But yes, you will need to use your own computer to do it. The reason is uh, it will involve pictures. And Replit uh, can't uh, use the package necessary to manipulate pictures. OK, uh, Chad, if you get a chance, uh, there you go. Yeah, your 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 image is <laughs> I think you've got lunch on your lens. Yeah. Okay, so other questions? <laughs> Getting better. Uh, but please, please, Chad, don't lean close to your camera and breathe on it because uh, I'm sure your dental work is great, but I don't want to see it. Okay, your picture is great now. Yeah, my sticky note left the film. Uh, it's not supposed to do that, is it? Anybody have any questions? Any questions at all? With the Visual Studio Code and the CMD thing, what do we put in to run something that we're coding? Okay. There are multiple ways of running your code. Uh, would you be willing uh, to share your screen and uh, we'll try uh, running in a few different ways? Okay. All right, one sec. Uh, and also, uh, if you are having problems running Python on your own machine, now's the time to start formulating your question. Okay, so let's take a look. Now, so where we are right now is uh, uh, Visual Studio Code is open and there's a terminal open. Uh, first, I'll notice that the file that Santana is editing has not been saved. And I can tell because it's a white ball uh, instead of an X. So let's see, you're on Windows? Yes, so Control S will save. Good. Now, second thing is that I notice on the Visual Studio Code side is that uh, uh, it's not clear what folder you're in right now. And that goes to the answer to Santana's first question. So yeah, do open folder and navigate to your 1100 uh, desktop, uh, 1100 and select folder. Good, good. So now Visual Studio Code is all set. So double click on test.py and uh, open up your console there with control J. Control and the J key, good, there you go. Uh, now you're in PowerShell though, so let's see what happens. Try uh, Python, uh, test.py. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, uh, if you close that window. Good. Now let's see how to do it on the uh, through the command prompt. 
<laughs> now notice it says right now, uh, C colon backslash users backslash Tana. And that means uh, you're not in the same directory. You're not in the 1100 directory. Uh, now, if you do DIR, go ahead, do DIR, D, um, DIR, hit enter. Now, in there is going to be your 1100. Uh, let's see if you scroll. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's in your desktop. Right. So here, uh, notice that in this listing, the word desktop appears. Right. So it would be to get from your home directory to the desktop 1100 would be CD space, capital D desktop, backslash 1100. Hit enter. And now try Python dot, uh, uh, Python space test.py. Awesome, so now you have two ways. Okay, hopefully that'll go away when you click the close box there. Is it not going away? Okay, good. Now there's one more thing I'd like to show. How come your screen got dark? Okay. I took a screenshot. Ah, okay. So uh, finally, I notice your 1100 folder on your desktop. So double click on that. Okay, now this may or may not work. So let's try it. This is a Windows feature. Uh, a feature like this does exist on the Mac, but it's harder to get to. What I want you to do is hold down the shift key and right click right where your mouse cursor is. And down in the lower part of the menu, it says open PowerShell window here. Go ahead and do that. And oh, notice no. you're in the you're in the right place. So Python test.py. There you go. Oh. That makes life a lot easier. Okay. Is everyone able to run Python on their local computer? Please tell me if you can't. Uh, I actually just tried it out again and it, I thought it was working um, Tuesday, but it's not working anymore. And I didn't change anything, I didn't touch anything. So maybe- Okay, would you be willing to share your screen? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this is what I have right now. So I just have this, you know, test.py. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I tried the this, but it didn't work. It's like okay. Now, what does anybody see? What I see. First thing to recommend. Not saved. That's coming from Jonathan. Oh, right. okay. So, control. Uh, you on Windows? So, Control S. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, while clicking up there, yep, then control S. Good. And now try it in the window below. Uh, yeah, hit control C, you're in a weird PowerShell mode. PowerShell, PowerShell is go. too complicated. Go. Uh, go ahead. Oh, okay, I think it's working now. Uh, the question is, Where's the window? Is it just taking its sweet time? Uh, okay, there was a problem. Oh, I see uh, Visual Studio Code, I think, made this mistake for you. You should feel very, very thankful. Uh, yeah. On line one, you mm -hmm. it's import PyPlot as PyPlot. Oh, so change yeah. Change that, that last word to PLT. There you go. And save now. Yeah. Now, and, yeah. and now, save. now let's try it. Yeah. yeah. So you can use the up arrow, click in there, and up arrow once. Click, 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 click. Yep, good. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Difficulties getting 
Python to run. Okay. Uh, first order of business is I'd like you to uh, download some pictures, two pictures, um, uh, and they need to be moved into the directory where you're putting your Python code. Okay, everybody clear on that. So I'm gonna give you some links in a moment. Uh, media file. Okay, here comes the first link. And chat, where's the chat? There it is. It seems like the buttons move. Okay, here is the first link to a file called p1.jpg. I want you to download it and move it using the technique of your choice to the folder where you're putting the Python programs. And here comes the second link. Okay, so everyone make sure that those pictures are moved to wherever it is that you're writing your Python. I'm getting a weird glitch with mine right now. All right, uh, if you'd be willing to share your screen, maybe I can help you. Sure. Something weird's happening that whenever I click on download, it sends me to this. Oh, that's the same thing that's been happening for me too. Yeah, same for me. Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay, uh, so... Okay, so hit uh, download. All right. Uh, yeah, that's not right. What if I... Oh, yeah, you don't want to... That, that's too difficult. No, nobody else is going to be able to figure that out. Here, let me, uh, yeah. let me do one thing again. Try this, uh, because I had removed a word that I thought was superfluous. Try that link, please. Let me go pull it up. Come on. Does it not let me share and check the chat at the same time, or is it like a different tab? It's, it's, uh, it's. I think you have to click on the yep. three dots up top, and then it'll have like a chat option. Yeah, it was just like popped out here. Uh, the new one uh, still doesn't work. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just uh, it takes you to the weird blank white screen. Here, uh, how about this? That is the wrong thing. Oh no, that's the right thing. All right. Because then you can just do right click save image as, or wait. Yep, yep, that you could do, but it should be easier than that. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Um, right, the, the download from there. Wow, wow, that, uh, that's a new one on me. Uh, what browser are you using? I'm using Chrome. Okay. Hello, puppies. Hello. All the puppies come for a visit. Okay. So, um, is, is anyone here met with success? No, I haven't had any success yet. That is so weird. Okay, stop your sharing, and I will try the same thing. All right, so let me share my desktop. And um, uh, I will paste 
instead of using um, the uh, this interface, I'll do that. And let me hit download. Huh. This morning, that didn't happen. So something weird has gone on at Mediafire. So watch what I do. I'm going to right click. Oh, I bet it's going to have the same thing is going to happen. Download. Wow, downloading broke on Mediafire. And with that, I'll see you on Tuesday. Ah, no. Okay. Hmm. Is it just the two photos or are we going to need more? Uh, well, you're going to need like 11 more in order to do the project. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's just start totally over here. Mediafire. And it's 1,100 pictures. Uh, see, other people have downloaded it. Let's try that. This is not working. I accept. And now try download. Ooh, this morning, no one had a problem. We broke the internet. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, we're, got, we're out of here. Um, What can we do? So download won't work from here either. That is bizarre. I have to figure a way around this. Let's try download from here. And it takes you here instead of actually downloading. This morning, this would have downloaded. All right. Mm hmm. So let me think of another way of getting you this. Okay, I'm going to upload these two pictures to Schoology. Let's see what happens there. And uh, I believe uh, let's go to Schoology. Now I don't have to stop sharing because my Schoology may show you some ultra secret stuff that uh, you're not supposed to see. So uh, just give me a moment. I will try to remedy this. Oh, but now I need to use my one two factor authentication. You know, the internet's nowhere near as fun as it used to be with all this safety stuff. The bad guys take all the fun out. That's why we can't have nice things. All right, and go to introduction to computing, and a file. And now I'm almost there, I'm making progress. So I'm going to put all of them. Okay, so first those. Okay, Schoology doesn't want to upload more than 10 files at a time. So I'll just do the, the two. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so a file, try it again. And add. Okay, uh, if you uh, turn to the class Schoology page, you'll see that P1 and P2.jpg are both uh, there. So please download these and put, put them 
All right, how do you download from here? So save image as, and you could then navigate to wherever your 1100 is. Excuse me, lots of hiccups. Or you could save the image to downloads uh, and then uh, move it manually. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. I need to see your faces. Give me some thumbs up when you have completed this step. Okay, David, David wins. He did it first. Asher, thank you. Okay, Maximus. Matt, thank you. Henry, good. Santana, thank you. Jose? Good, so it looks like it's happening. I'm gonna move on because I think everybody else will be finished in just a moment. All right, so- yeah, I'm good now. Good, good. All right, so share the whole desktop. And um, so you need both of those pictures, P1 and P2.jpg in the folder where your Python code is. So uh, I need uh, code. A special instruction for those of you who have Macintosh. Now, the last class we discovered no one had a Mac. Is that still true? I can't see your faces right now. So just, if you I have, have a Mac. I have a Mac. Me... Okay. So only, only the people who have a Mac uh, in Visual Studio Code, hold down Shift, Command, and the letter P. Okay, you should see this. And type in P A T H. And it says shell command install code in the command code command in path. Okay. And on the bottom, it says shell command code successfully installed in the path. Got it. Okay, so what that will enable you to do is when you're in the terminal, if you type in CODE and hit enter, you'll, you'll, it'll launch code. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna open a folder. And good, all right. I'm gonna open that folder. So there's my P1 and P2. Let's see what they look like. Okay. There are two pictures uh, of stars taken uh, in the 1920s at the uh, Lowell Observatory. And these are the actual two pictures which were used to identify Pluto. So this is the... Uh, these are the photographic plates with which a, an astronomer named Clyde Tumbaugh uh, identified uh, the existence of Pluto. Let me show you a, the instrument that he used. And here, and here. Uh, blink. Okay, so this is the instrument that he used. And in fact, if you look down there, you'll see the same two pictures. So this was, this is an instrument called a blink comparator. And uh, this particular device was made, I don't know if you can see that, it says Carl Zeiss. Carl Zeiss is, is one of the premier optics manufacturers in the universe. Uh, 
Uh, they've been around. In fact, their optics were, are, were so far ahead of everyone else's that there was a long period of time <coughs> where Carl Zeiss was actually a, uh, a, see, a suit, top secret facility uh, for glass making. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, Sweden and uh, Carl Zeiss uh, factory was actually a national secret because they were so far ahead of everyone else in creating uh, lenses and such. So this device, when it was made, this probably cost more than buying two or th even three houses. But we're going to recreate it in five minutes on every one of our laptops. Here's how it worked. So this is an eyepiece through which uh, the user could uh, choose to view through this end and see whatever photograph was here or choose to see, you can see my mouse, right? Where I'm hovering. Okay. Or choose yeah, this end. Can. Thank you. So the user was able to flip ping pong back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And by doing that rapidly, any difference would become visible. The idea is, is that a star isn't going to move. If the pictures are uh, properly aligned, star is not, is not going to move. So anything that does move must be part of our own solar system. Okay, so that's what the instrument did. That's what we're going to write right now. But first, we want to uh, write some code. So I'm going to create a new file. For me, I'm going to call it Blink2. You could call it Blink. And I want to add one line, and then we're going to pause. Thank you. Go away. Then we're going to pause, and I want you to run this program, and you're, it's going to cause an error. Don't worry. So import CV2. That's all I want you to write. Now, uh, do we need to put the dot py in the program when we make the name? Yes. OK. Uh, doing it that way, yes. With the uh, create a new file using the way that I just did it. Yeah. All right, now uh, I'm going to open up my terminal down at the bottom and Python on the Mac, it's Python 3. On Windows, it's Python. Uh, Blink2.py. Now, mine is not going to error out because I already have the software installed. But it'll take a minute to load, and then it did nothing. But for you, there's going to be an error. So it's a race. Who's the first one to get the error? Okay, David, would you be willing to show your screen? I have to stop sharing myself first. Okay, if you could make that window a little wider. Okay, good, good. So <clears throat> the error you're seeing is because something called CV2 is not installed on your computer. So let's install it. Uh, on Windows, type PIP space. Yeah, in that terminal. That's fine. Or any terminal for that matter. Install space. And now uh, open CV. So open Charles Victor dash no, no, uh, no spaces. So open CV, no space. <clears throat> Python and enter.
Okay, so that's a successful completion. <clears throat> so now if you uh, re-execute Python space blink.py, it will not do anything, but it also won't error. Blink.py, good. I think if we exited Visual, don't you don't have to do it. If we exit Visual Studio Code and then re-enter it, this red squiggle on line one would probably go away. <clears throat> but you don't have to do that. All right, is there anyone who is, have, is still having a problem? Is it the same way for a Mac to get it installed? Uh, correct. It, except it's going to be pip3 instead of pip. Thank you, David. Yeah, I think I'm having a problem. All right, let me stop sharing. And if you could show your screen. Okay, so um, it's PIP space, what again, sorry? Uh, I can't see where you're talking, okay, good. Um, could you make your window wider so that we could uh, see more of the line? Sure. Um, one sec. All right. All right, using a fancy Windows feature that nobody needs. Okay, so install space O P E N C V dash P Y T H O N. Okay, enter. Oh, okay. So why was mine kind of different from a? Well, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, hit up arrow twice. Let's see what you get. Okay. Uh, no, that, that was the one we used before, sorry. That oh, okay, so, so there you go. There's your problem. There was no dash between okay. the V and the P. Thank you. Okay, you can hit down arrow until uh, you get a blank line. Uh, or or enter, right? Yeah, you can just run it again. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, if you could stop sharing. All right, and we'll share my screen. Okay. So uh, here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, uh, follow along. So make a list called images. Uh, let me let my aged dog out. Oh, poor girl. Uh, she had uh, 16 teeth removed the other day. Can you imagine if you had 16 teeth removed? You'd be a hurting puppy. But she's already running around and wagging tail. And, yeah. Okay. So uh, to read an image, uh, I'm going to append it and read it and append it to this list. So images.append that adds to the back of a list cv 2im as in Mary, read, im read, m as in Mary, parenthesis, and let's put in the string, p1.jpg, and two close parentheses. I'm going to copy and paste that line and make the second line load p2. Remember to save your file. And try running it again. Uh, there shouldn't be any output of any kind. So that was correct. That was correct operation, what I just did. But yes, I do understand that CV2 is showing a uh, red squiggle, but it's not an error. It's Visual Studio Code getting it wrong. Now, please tell me if you get something different. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do a test. We're gonna erase this code later. This is just a test. Uh, I'd like to show the image. So CV2 dot IM, M is in Mary, show, im show. That takes two arguments. One, the first is the name of the window. Now, this is different from, it, well, it's also the default title of the window, uh, but you can change the title. We'll see how to do that. Uh, but what you're looking at there is uh, the, that first argument is the name of the window. You're able to create multiple windows at once and the way that you tell them apart is that name. Okay, so we're creating a window named P. And now we wanna give it what image to show. So let's show the first image. Now wait, don't run, uh, don't run it. Uh, now we want to wait for a key to be struck. That would be CV2 dot wait key and uh, using zero, that means wait forever. And one final instruction, CV2 dot lowercase d destroy all windows, parenthesis. Okay, now we're ready to run this test. And I've got to warn you, look at my screen. I don't see anything different. What I've got to warn you about is OpenCV loves to open its pictures behind all the other windows. So I'm going to go start looking for the window. Uh, it's not there. Oh, there it is. Okay, now uh, don't, whatever you do, don't close it using the, the close gadget. Instead, <clears throat> click on the window and hit any key like your space. Okay, I'm gonna run that again. And once again, oh, I don't know where the window went. It must, have, it must be here somewhere. Oh, it opened behind. Click on the picture and hit a key. This time I'm gonna hit uh, J. Okay, is that working for everyone? Uh, actually, when I ran it, um, it actually popped up in front of my terminal, the window. Really? Yeah. I've never seen it work correctly. It's actually <laughs> it's actually documented as uh, it will open up behind other windows. I mean, uh, I, I I just did it. I don't know if I'm I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I didn't well, move a window or anything. It just good for you, uh, yeah. Nicholas. Take my advice. Uh, head out to the gas station and buy a lottery ticket. It's your lucky day. All right, will do. <laughs> okay, will do. Okay, uh, checking in with you. Everybody is where I am, right? Oh, I actually did have one more question. When you open the window, you said like click on it and then like hit a letter or something. Yes. Or Does it matter yeah. which letter? Or should uh, I no, it doesn't. That? It doesn't matter which letter as long as it's one that actually produces a, a key code, like oh, uh, like, like, like don't click on function or control or option yeah. or command mm -hmm. or caps lock or shift, actually hit a, a key that has a letter. Okay. And the window should close. Okay. Okay. So let's write the blink comparator. We have two images. And what we want to do is whenever you hit a key, except for the Q, we'll use Q for quit. 
So whenever you hit a key, it'll switch to the other image. So ping pong, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Picture one, picture two, picture one, picture two. So uh, you can leave those lines there because we can cut and paste them. Uh, so we need a, um, uh, to initialize a variable which will hold uh, the key that you push and initialize it to anything other than Q. And then while the key is not equal to Q, loop. So I'm going to add this. This is, we're going to have to change this. This is just testing code. And now let's get the key equals, here's an important part, chr, and put the whole weight key in a set of parentheses. Okay. So weight key is not returning a letter, it's returning a number. And it is the job of CHR to turn the number into a letter. So when I run this program, I have to go find the picture. And now when I hit a key on the keyboard, nothing seems to change unless the key that I hit is the Q. So anybody have any questions about that code? And also let's confirm it's working for you. Yeah, it's working for me. All right. Let's introduce, um, we need a way of switching or ping ponging between the two images. So we'll call that current image and give it a value of zero. And then instead of showing image zero all the time, let's use current image. And now let's implement the ping pong. So current image equals one minus current image. So if it starts out at zero, one minus zero is one. So that'll show us the second picture. If it's already one, one minus one is zero. It'll show us the first picture. Okay, let's try it. Uh, go find your picture. And, oh, look at that. It works for me. Is it working for you? I'm just hitting space bar. I've got an error on mine. All right, let me quit mine, Q, and uh, stop sharing. Please share your screen. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Um, I am going to bet the pictures did not download correctly. On the left-hand side, click on P1. Oh, okay. Click on P2. 
They are there correctly. All right, go back to your code. My first, my first hypothesis was wrong. Let's look for something else. Uh, CV2 im show. Um, oh, um, okay, got it. Uh, lines 16 and 17 should be deleted. All right. Good. All right. And then try that. Save your file. Oh, right. All right. Uh, line 11, cv2.im show images current. And... All right. Uh, what might be going wrong for you? Everything I see so far looks correct. So line 11 is the problem. Images, current image. Hmm. So it's saying, what it's saying to you is that the image has no image data in it. Uh, it's an empty image. Okay. Uh, but why? P1 dot JPG and P2 dot JPG. I am read, I am read. Hmm. Images. Current image. Hmm. Um, can you say uh, Python a space dash dash version? In the terminal? Down in the terminal. Uh, okay. And try typing DIR. Hit enter. <laughs> Everything's there. And, um, is anyone else uh, running into a problem? Is working for everybody. Hmm. No, I'm not running into a problem. It looks like I have the exact same thing. What? Someone ex exclaimed surprise. <laughs> Who would that be? Was that part of the class or a bystander? That was my roommate, sorry. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, and you have exactly the same thing. It looks the same. I can't see anything different. Hmm. Okay, well, let's uh, try some other stuff. Um, uh, try exiting uh, Visual Studio Code and let's start it up again. Right. Well, you students have such nice... Uh, Nice um, backgrounds. Okay, try ah. that again. Blink.py. Same thing. Okay, let's try something else. Um, use the Windows key and uh, uh, type 
type here to search and say CMD. Okay, run that. And change directory CD to Python space Python. Enter. Uh, DIR. Oh, I'm sorry, it's in desktop. So CD space capital D desktop backslash Python. Backslash, not forward. <laughs> yep. Okay, now try uh, Python blink.py. Hmm. Uh, Asher, I, I don't know what the problem is right now. Okay. I can just uh, keep going along and try and go back through later. Yeah, so yeah I'm problem. afraid that's what you'll need to do. Yeah, that's all right. Thanks for trying to help. Yeah, everything there looks correct. So, all right. So I'm gonna run my program again and uh, go find my picture. Yep. Thanks, thanks, I really need to know that right now. Go away. All right, so I'm gonna hit the space bar. It doesn't matter which key as long as it's not the Q. So uh, there are some things that are moving here. For example, look at that dot. You see my mouse cursor? So look at that. Yeah, dot. we can see it. We can see it. Yeah. And that's moving. Now, one would assume that the astronomer, Clyde Tumbaugh, knows uh, which of these are to be expected, that they're known already. And some of these are not known already. So notice how the stars stay still. But things in our own solar system uh, are moving relative to us. So I want you to take a look at that dot, pretty much in the center, and it's over here. Well, let's see, where, there it is. So here and here, and that was not expected. You just found Pluto. Okay. How far apart were these pictures taken? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I would imagine uh, on the order of weeks. Okay, finally, to exit the program, uh, the letter Q is reserved. So look at that. In a few lines of code, we created uh, the equivalent of the instrument used to discover Pluto, which, as I said, probably cost as much as a few houses. Okay, so the ping ponging Let's document this program now. Uh, load uh, both images into a list. Initialize key with anything other than Q. The loop will continue until a Q is entered. Anything other than Q will cause the two images to ping pong. Okay, uh, something important for me to point out 
is that here, the window name P is reused over and over. This means the uh, one image will replace another within that window. And now, um, wait forever for a key to be depressed. Uh, forever is indicated by the argument zero. Otherwise, if a different number was specified, the wait would end after that many milliseconds. So it's important that you use zero. And down here, let's add a comment. Uh, part of exiting the program is to clean up any open windows. And finally, this last one. <clears throat> Given two images, the indices for them are zero and one. This line of code toggles between zero and one. Okay, what do you think? Do you have any questions about this? I got one question. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the destroy all windows part at the end, could you make it so that it would be under a while thingy so that while key equals Q, it would destroy all windows? Uh, but once the windows are destroyed, why would you need to do it again? No, I meant like, huh. no, because I thought of a different way, because if you wanted to do multiple things, wouldn't it be better to have the quitting part be a while? Or is that, hmm, I need to rethink it. Yeah, I do have it as a while up here. So this is essentially says, uh, keep going until the user hits a queue. Okay, so I'd like to show you uh, your next project, which is not assigned yet, don't worry. Uh, we're going to be creating a flip book, which is only a little bit more difficult than uh, what we have now. So the flip book, uh, I'll be giving you the images uh, 0 through 11, so 12 images made by Mulbridge around 1872. I think this is a little bit, this particular set of images is a little bit later than 1872. So these pictures were remarkable. This was like, they actually put this on the cover of Scientific American. This blew people away. This is the first chronometric photography. Moybridge was hired by a man named Leland uh, Stanford. Now, Stanford was uh, at one point a governor of California. Uh, a, uh, I believe he was also a senator from California for a term. Uh, but also he's the founder 
of Stanford University and a guy who liked to raise horses. Now the apocryphal story is, which is believed to be false. So what I'm about to tell you is a story which historians cannot verify, uh, is that uh, he bet someone or someone bet him that a horse in a gallop at some point in the gallop has all four legs that come off the ground at the same time. And at this point, amazingly, no one had watched the horse closely enough to figure that out. They wanted uh, documented evidence that uh, all four hooves come off the ground at the same time in a galloping horse. Uh, so uh, uh, Stanford being well-to-do hired Moybridge uh, to uh, create a system in which uh, they'd be able to capture the running horse uh, in very fine steps in time. Now, the way that he did it is interesting. Uh, there was a straightaway on Stanford race course, private race course, uh, a straightaway. And uh, Moybridge uh, put uh, trip wires every oh, uh, 18 inches, uh, every 12 inches. I don't recall what the uh, exact number is. But there was a trip wire, which when tripped would cause an individual camera to expose a picture. So Moybridge's first efforts were, were not successful. Uh, so this is a later experiment where you got beautiful pictures. Well documented, we know the name of the horse, we know the name of the rider, etc. So what you're going to write is a flip book. Uh, and let me uh, run run uh, a, a version of the uh, code. So to see what it is that you're going to do. Blink. Mm -hmm. Python 3. And what's the name of it? It's called uh, Flip. Okay, there. So by Flipbook, uh, what I mean is that if you push a one letter on the keyboard, it'll advance by one frame. If you push a different letter on the keyboard, it will go backwards by one frame. So here I'm pushing S, S is in Sam, it's next to the A key. So S, forward, 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 forward. And there's our evidence that uh, all four hooves come off the ground at once. So on the ground, that's the A key, S key, A key, S key. So backwards, and I'll hold down the A. Now the ho horse seems to be running backwards. Now I'll hold down the S, and the horse is running forwards. So I believe this is going to be a very gentle final project. Nothing to get stressed about. And we're almost there. Then, as before, Q to quit. So given this code, what would need to change? Well, you need to be able to read in 12 images instead of two. And down here, this is going to be different because you're not toggling between zero and one. If the S key is detected, you need to advance. If the A key is detected, you need to back up. So it won't be this line of code anymore. It won't be that. It'll be some other lines of code. Now, can you think, can you anticipate a problem? I'm hitting S, 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 S. Now I'm holding down the S key. 
That means current image is going zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Can you think, can you foresee a problem? When it has to loop. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Thank There's you. There's someone Andy. yelling outside my window. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I might suggest that you lean out your window and, and tell them uh, a thing or two, but I don't want to be responsible for any fisticuffs that might result. Okay. So, yes, Henry is absolutely right. Uh, the list, we have experienced index errors ourselves, right? When you go beyond the end of a list. So you'll be responsible for writing that code. So if you detect an A, you should go backwards. And if you detect an S, you should go forwards without crashing. Okay. So uh, with that said, let me show you uh, a little bit more about OpenCV. Uh, OpenCV, uh, the C and the V stand for computer vision. OpenCV has got like anything you can imagine for doing the interpretation of, of images. OpenCV.org. And let's see what we can find here. Something that's fun. Uh, how about a tutorial? Uh, it has an enormous uh, range of GPU accelerated computer vision functions. Uh, the core functionality. Um, Let's see, actually what we're looking at is the documentation for the C version. What we want is the, um, I didn't get that. what we want actually is the Python version. Uh, what is this? Uh, new? Well, maybe we'll just get lucky. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Open CV manual for Python. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, uh, so display and save images and videos. Let's take a look. Oh, isn't that nice? That's a great tutorial. How about clicking here? Uh, getting started with images, which we have essentially done. Uh, I'm going to do something which you do not have to follow. Uh, let me, I'll, I'll show you how you'll be able to uh, even create videos uh, of yourself, capture, uh, capture images. So you can, if you want to follow this, follow along, import CV2. And um, uh, cap equals CV2 dot video capture. And uh, let's start out with a one uh, because I, it'll be different from machine to machine. And then uh, and uh, CV2 dot M show and give it a name and show it what picture and then the CV2 dot wait key. So it, it is similar in many ways uh, of zero and then CV2 dot, no, no, no. Uh, it'll be cap dot release and CV2 dot, um, destroy all windows. And let's see how badly I mangled this. I'm calling it camera.py. And um, 
Let me try running it. And let me make a, a, a funny face. Yeah, it didn't work. Did it? Oh, it did. All right, now it's waiting for a key. Oh, there it is. There, I captured a picture, but I did it poorly. Uh, hit a key and it goes away. Uh, I don't know why it printed all this. It didn't used to. Now you can imagine if this was in a loop, it can actually record video. Now let's try that again. And uh, and Wow, that looks like a uh, still out of one of the uh, Star Trek original series uh, episodes. There's a giant hand in space that grabs the Enterprise. Okay, so OpenCV is enormously capable. Typically, the people doing self-driving cars, things like that, they start with OpenCV. All right, so any questions about the project? Any questions about the program that we wrote today? And I'll leave it on screen here if you wanna take a screenshot. So Santana, do you think now you could work in pictures into your Dungeons and Dragons programs? Oh, definitely. Good. So I, I remembered that you wanted to process pictures. I made sure that we got a chance to do that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. That was a few weeks back too. Thanks for mm -hmm. remembering. Yeah, well, playing with pictures is fun. And uh, we could probably ride out uh, the remainder of the semester doing something fun. I like fun. Look at this face. Isn't this the face of somebody who likes fun? I also like fun, yes. <laughs> okay. So any questions? Can you show the camera code again? The camera code, sure. So this number one, that was a lucky guess. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, it could be a zero on your machine. It could be a one on your machine, who knows? Uh, let me try it with zero, see if it uh, complains less. No, it still complains. And it, uh, uh, okay, see, that's a different camera on my computer. So that one, when I hit one, that was just lucky guess to, uh, that it was the right camera. Let's try camera two, let's try that. So I have three cameras, I have multiple cameras on. All right, so that's another camera. All right, uh, well, finally camera three, maybe, uh, maybe that's the ticket. Uh, and yeah, okay, so there's the, uh, there's the camera up top. That's a wonderful picture. Oh gosh, I gotta save that one. Yeah. Okay. So this, uh, if you have multiple cameras, including virtual cameras, then that integer is what selects between them. All right, so uh, I'm gonna stop here. Uh,
uh, I will over the weekend post the uh, project. And like I said, you're already 60, 75, 80% of the way there. So you'll convert this program into your project program, flipbook program. One final time, any questions? All right, everyone, have an awesome weekend. That is your homework. Uh, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great evening, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.